Hmm. Trying to see out the window, but not working. Either way, another great day. Or evening or night or whatever. Uh, here in the verse. Welcome everybody to VR Citizen. I'm Chachi Sanchez. I'll be your guide. I was about to say, I'm in Art Corp, aren't I? Yes, I am. Yes, it is another beautiful day. And uh, yeah, welcome to a brand new era of VR Citizen. I have this, all this fancy new audio equipment. And uh, yeah, we have it permanently set up for the chair now. Or well, I basically I can move the setup from my desk to my chair. Come on, elevator. And uh, yeah, expect to see me online a lot more often. I should be streaming every other day, at least 8 to 12 hours, uh, VR Citizen. And every other day after that, just kind of farting around on playing whatever games that I want to mess with. Uh, <clears throat> expecting a lot more highlights and a lot more of just me online in general. And uh, I thank you guys all for all the voodoo that you do for helping me grow to this point. So, yeah. Uh, with all that said, I do plan on doing some stuff for the stream. Uh, we're going to be having, hopefully, some ship giveaways. We're going to start off with something small, like a ground vehicle to test it out. And then I have plenty of ships up my sleeve. Uh, a few of them with LTI tokens that are going to be available for uh, people to win and add to their collection for free as uh, prizes and giveaways. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, with that said, it is 3.19. Oh, and we got Invictus week. And if memory serves me correct, I believe the Skytram. Yes, yes, day one. We have Misk, Mirai, and Crusader. So this will have the new fighter, the Fury. Uh, we picked up three of these. Uh, two are gonna be available for giveaway with LTI tokens, so yeah, stick around. All right, let's get downtown and let's go to the expo. This will be another one of our expo tours in VR. I don't get to do this ride that often. Oh, I need to remind myself to get a bunch of uh, footage of all the fireworks whenever the expo is done. That's gonna be important. Woo, very cool. The Bevic Expo. All right. So, yeah, I've read these plaques before. This is basically the history of the actual Invictus Week and them, you know, gathering people from the fringes for their first day or so of actual flight. We have all the different uh, branches of the Navy military here. We got the distinct in service Naval Oath here in witness that I do solemnly pledge mind and body that I will serve to and protect the United Empire of Earth against all who would seek to harm it and its people. I will faithfully discharge the duties asked of me and when called upon, I will offend the empire with my life. Defend. That D needs to be. That should be a little bit more pronounced. That looks kind of like an O. I will defend the. Then we always have this cool. I like this poster right here, the one where he's reaching out and you can step up. Take the step. It's kind of like the the flag raising at Iwo Jima kind of feel to it. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you got the 999 Squadron that's uh, made up of all F8, yeah, F8 
uh whatever they're called the f8 hornets they're not they're super hornets right no super hornet is f7 f8 lightning that's what it is yeah that super jacked freaking ship all of the um members of the 999 squad um uh get one of those for free lucky bastards anyways let's head down to the bevet convention Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, so, welcome to the Bevic uh, Convention Hall. We have... Hang on, it'll spin around and tell me. So, the first day again... Wait, did it not say? I thought it did. Okay, here we go. Uh, again, the first day is Misk and their new... Um, uh, what do you call it? executive line no performance line of ships mirai which will be featuring the fury and then crusader industries so that'll be pretty cool let's go check everything all right so let's see here in the main hall we got the inferno aries ion combo we got the hercules's herculi and then in the side hall we have the star just the star runner interesting as well as the miss call with all the freelancers and for uh, furies all right so all right so first up on the decks we have the lightning and it is a uh, heavy fighter by crusader industries spark fear in the corridors of the most formidable gunships and frigates with the Ares ion this laser-equipped variant delivers extremely powerful shots to quickly disable the shields of even the biggest enemy vessels. So, yeah, it's got electrical, you know, pulse-type... Electric cannon-type stuff. No physical projectiles with it. You can see the big capacitors in the back there. So, yeah, this is the uh, concept of a gun built... No, a ship built around a gun and kind of vice versa the gun was designed for the ship but oh my gosh i hate it when assholes are blocking oh my gosh really both of them well now we got to read over someone's shoulders because the freaking npcs gotta be quote lifelike yes yes isn't it interesting get out of the way whether heading up a crew or hunting big ships solo the Ares inferno is a force to be reckoned with the ballistic gatling equipped variant tears through gunship armor and turns smaller fighters to dust in seconds uh anyways that brings us to all the hercules herculi there's a video of your aries in performance it can <laughs> reek as far as yeah, the pure damage output should be insane. Uh, but again, it's nerfed because, you know, fighters shouldn't explode in one hit. <laughs> for now, for now. Anyways, the A2 Hercules Starlifter. The A2 gunship has been used to devastating effect in airborne assaults, search and rescue operations, landing initiatives with more than double the firepower of the M2, and a custom bomb bay capable of delivering a staggering payload the A2 caters to anyone having to haul a massive amounts of cargo through potentially unfriendly skies. All right. And yeah, you know, standard C2 Hercules stuff. Ugh. This is the one, of course, with the bombs. We, uh, we know about this one. This one's fun. <laughs> uh, but then here in the middle, we got the c2 which is the medium freight variant utilizing patented hercules military grade space frame and expanding cargo capacity while sacrificing barely any firepower just a bit of firepower the c2 is taken private sector by storm and has become the industry standard for racing teams ship dealers manufacturers construction orgs mining corporations and even large-scale touring entertainment outfits so yeah pure cargo variant you're gonna get your money's worth out of space in here no bombay just extra extra grid 
All right, Crusader M2 Hercules Star Lifter. Yeah, medium freight combat. Uh, the M2 Hercules, the UAE's premier tactical star lifter, the large scale transports potent combination of capacity, maneuverability, durability, and robust weaponry package assures your cargo and crew get to where they're going in one piece. And uh, yeah, this is, I think, got pretty much like best of all worlds. A lot of cargo capacity. I think it's still got the chin gun. Yep. The chin gun controlled by the pilot on a gimbal, which, yes, the full cargo variant does not have. And the bomber variant does have. So, yeah, just a bit of extra firepower on your cargo ship. For the bit of a rough and tumble to. All right, and here she is. She may not look like much, kid, but she's got it where it counts. Your own personal Millennium Falcon, the Mercury Star Runner. Ah, medium freight. If you need it there fast and unscathed, the Mercury checks all the boxes of expected of a dependable courier vessel and then some. Built with the same engineering and design principles that have made Crusader Industries the go-to manufacturer for galactic transport on any scale, the Mercury Star Runner will let you stay ahead of schedule, trouble, and the competition. So, yeah, if anything, this should be light freight, not medium, because they list the damn C2 Hercules as medium. And then anything under this, like the Cutlass or the Freelancer, should be like super light freight. Or like, you know, courier freight or something like, you know, not light, but... This definitely doesn't feel medium compared to the medium that is the C2. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is definitely a decent amount of space. This is double, I believe, what you could fit in a Cutlass. But medium, if the C2 is medium, then that's a wide, wide, wide category indeed. But yeah, this is a cool ship. You got chess pieces in there that open up hidden floor panels. You got sophisticated uh, smuggling uh, cash areas where you can hide packages that have, what do you call it, shieldings and stuff. Like you can't be scanned by security scanners and whatnot, so that'll be a whole gameplay loop for smuggling and all sorts of fun stuff with that. And it's a cool little mini tunnel network all throughout the ship. All right, all right, let's get over to the Miss Callway and see what the deal is with the Fury Fighter. Again, we got a couple of these with LTI tokens that we're going to have as giveaways soon on the stream. So uh, stay tuned and be watching. We're going to be doing stream giveaways first. I don't know how I'll be able to do it with YouTube. Uh, once, just let me figure out how to do giveaways first, and then we're going to open it up to possibly, you know, having a YouTube video announcing them, and y'all guys can get on the action as well. But yeah, there she is. Man, all the components are visible. If this thing takes any hit at all, it's pretty much done for and disabled. It's crazy how small they got everything. Yeah, like they got batteries, all the shield stuff. Oh, man, fantastic. So this is, yeah, your TIE Advanced or your Faye Valentine ship. Depending on what you're thinking of. I mean, it definitely has a lot of qualities of both, uh, obviously, but it's so small. They're just sitting in a round cockpit surrounded by guns. Now, the bomber variant slash missile runner is really, really cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see him. So two, so yeah, it is 16, two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight. Oh, there's three on the bottom though. Are there three on, oh, there's three. So three times four. So that's 12 times eight. Yeah, it is 20 missiles. My God. 
That is a lot of firepower. Uh, you better get out of there real quick once you blow your load. This also has a blast canopy that I do want to check out here. Very cool, very cool. Drops down. All right, blast shield. There's the thing. Very cool. Okay, so how about we just turn it on? Hmm. Uh, no visual screen, so we'll have to check that out in a separate session. But I like the visibility so far. We're definitely going to have a full session of me testing these out racing and combat and just generally you know seeing how well they move around and shoot but uh yeah i love it it looks great i can't wait to fold it up it looks amazing i bet you flying around unfolded they look even better especially in a squad so yeah let's see what the little info kiosk has to say uh snub fighter i love it featuring best in class maneuverability and fully integrated cutting edge xeon tech the next generation fury snub fighter from mirai uses its four halo mounted size four halo mounted size four laser repeaters to redefine short range space combat yeah this thing is definitely king of the skies as far as local defense force goes it doesn't have any jump drive so you're not going to go places with it for sure but that doesn't matter when it's capable of in you could park a whole bunch of them really cheaply in a small space and you could use them quite effectively in large numbers like this is perfect flying around defense force and you know downtown type of cruiser I can see this being working very well at places like Lorville or Area 18. Hell, any type of city for that matter. All right, cool, cool. Oh, let's read the bomber kiosk. What, is there something cool down there? Sir? All right. He, he's fine. All right, featuring best in class maneuverability and fully integrated cutting edge Xeon tick. Uh. The Fury MX Snub Bomber Mirai uses its 20 Halo mounted missiles to devastate targets during short range space combat. So, basically, almost the same sentence. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so. Next, we have this, which is blocked by this guy. <clears throat> the Razor EX. This is the focus with stealth. Outfitted with signature reducing materials, the Razor X was a specialty build for the UEE advocacy for use in surveillance and extraction operations. Yes, thank you. Although the X was ultimately rejected for widespread use, uh, Miss released a variation of the model for the public who were looking to keep a lower profile. So yeah, stealth and speed for a solo fighter. And it looks the part. Let's read the info panel. Uh, yeah, the light fighter, Reliant Tana, with ever expanding, with he humanity ever expanding throughout the universe, the need for a versatile, lightweight fighter has expanded with it. Easy to maintain with a rugged construction, the Reliant Tana makes for an ideal choice for frontier and outpost defense thanks to its custom high yield power plant, stronger shields, and additional weapon mounts. This thing has kind of like a B-wing feel to it, especially I think the... Does the cockpit rotate with this guy? It looks like it does. I'm just trying to remember how. Either way, yeah, these things are real cool. Very, very different look and feel. And obviously this one has extra guns instead of sensors and stuff. One of these variants is like a camera ship, which is real interesting. Ugh. Okay, okay. And then, of course, well, before we get to the big boy, let's get to this guy over here. 
a tried and true the freelancer i mean you know who doesn't know about the famed transport ship that made everything possible both irl and in-game lore history this one is the military variant so they have yeah missile slash torpedo tubes instead of extra cargo on the inside and some bit of uh extra boom tubes on the outside then let me read over the shoulder again all right freelancers are used oh this is the mis by the way the military variant uh freelancers are used as long-haul merchant ships by major corporations but they are just as frequently repurposed as dedicated exploration vessels by independent captains who want to operate on the fringes of the galaxy but that doesn't really describe the misc variant at all does it it's got extra wep laser weaponry battery capacity i think maybe not extra battery capacity but better weaponry stock as far as the laser cannons go and then yeah it's obviously got its torpedoes where, where does the torpedo launch from is it down at the bottom those are definitely torpedoes i just don't know oh maybe the top of the ship possibly maybe they don't launch out of the bottom but yeah basically the uh, military version of the freelancer very cool little ship and then we have the military version as we can see with the missiles sticking out of the front underneath the cockpit those are practically torpedoes at that size uh this is the starfare so refueling god damn it why does every npc hover around the info kiosks they literally have no business looking at them and it's just for quote fake effect to make them seem lifelike and all it does is get in the way of people who want to read the kiosk oh my god i swear to god if that guy okay he's leaving good 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 all right oh all right so this is the starfare gemini the heavy refueling heavy intended uh the united empire of earth military uses an adapted rough and tumble variant of the starfare for their frontline operations the g2m gemini more commonly the starfare gemini or star g trades some cargo capacity and maneuverability in exchange for reinforced armor increased shielding more powerful engines and stronger versions of the three man turrets and it's got a bunch of you know missiles on the front i'm pretty sure it doesn't have these sticking out of the front on the uh, regular variant so that's nice and then yeah each of the cannons are a lot bigger and beefier and then we'll go to the back and we'll check out the cargo um oh yeah no ramp on this thing because of the fuel pods which are removable and swappable now uh but there's the cargo bay <laughs> of course we get to see the lightning here which again flown by the 999 squadron members well they don't have it spinning interesting can i jump over this there's no way but yeah this thing is a beast it's just got so many guns like a size three size four size three three i think those are on gimbals got lots of missiles it's got a turret on the top size fours i mean this thing is insane got like eight forward facing guns big ones too i think the turret is slave to the pilot it's a single pilot solo pilot ship absolutely insane and then of course you have all your components and stuff like jump drives from waytech you got your batteries and your your shield generators and stuff so all of this is on display over on the side here at every expo hall it has all of the different sizes actually including all the tiny little ones isn't that cool you can just pocket some of those 
All right. This is the mine layer, isn't it? Right? The spirit. The light bomber. Uh, Crusader Industries brings its usual commitment to excellence directly to the civilian market with the A1 Spirit, a mid-sized multipurpose starship equipped as a light bomber, but packing enough versatility to tackle multiple roles and unpredictable jobs. So this is like a super cutty, I guess. Multi-platform variant ship from them. It looks cool as hell. Very interesting. And then do we got another one of these? Is that the A1 Spirit? Yep. All right, cool. So the A1 Spirit, folks. <laughs> well, that's it for day one for the uh, military expo here at Invictus Week. One Empire. Uh, indeed. So, yeah, go on down to the expo if you're wanting to rent any of these ships. Uh, if not, I got you covered on the actual immersive tour and the day-by-day -day guide and year-by-year -year changes uh, as they come along. Thank you guys so much for dropping by and watching. Uh, I'm Chachi Sanchez. And this has been VR Citizen. Again, we will be having giveaways. I should be streaming on and online a lot more often. So if you're having any trouble or wanting to get things set up, just drop by and ask. And uh, with that said, eh, okay. Looks like he's throwing a free throw. <laughs> All right. Well, with uh, okay, there he goes. With that said, uh, you guys have a great week. Till next time, as always, stay safe and fly right. Y'all have a good one. I'm going to just stare at this for a while and make sure that we are able to get it as an automatic thumbnail from the YouTube algorithm. All right, brilliant. Hello there. Uh, okay, cool. So, first day of Invictus done. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that kind of gets in the way of people walking up the <laughs> ramp. Are we not supposed to use the ramp? Is it just stairs only? Oh, I didn't realize. Oops. I mean, screw you if you're in a wheelchair, right? <laughs> 